Meditation of the Morning, Memorial Day 2022. Um, you know what's really hilarious? Um, the whole fetish and preference thing. That's, you ever hear the word preference? That's a new word liberals are throwing out there to say, well, I prefer this kind of guy, but, you know, that's just a preference. See, wh wh like, white liberal women, they always get away. They always get away because they realize they can't escape female sexuality. And so when they go up and they say, you know, I prefer Chad, a man with muscles, blonde hair, blue eyes. Oh, that's not a fetish, by the way. You're not objectifying it and, discrimi you know, and you're playing discrimination to get it. Oh, that's just a preference, right? Now, if a man would say, you know, I have a preference. I'd like goth girls. Well, first, they belong in the same race. You know, goth girls are white. It's not going to go with a black goth girl if any Delusian intersectionality would happen there. Um... It's kind of like, would you still choose a goth girl even if it was of a different race? And if so, what is, is your preference simply just a, a party hat you put on? And now, consider this, that you go to bed at night and you say, I have a preference, that's okay, and that's cool, but when you have objectively, but when you supposedly... Uh, discriminate and say, you know, I come from a Jewish background. I want a Jewish woman. I don't want any non goyim Oh, that's a fetish because you're objectifying it and making the assumption of the desire ironically controlled by individualistic liberal whims. And supposedly that's unhealthy because having too much desire, and this, this kind of sex shame comes back to uh, pornography addiction, the ideal that you masturbate to porn all the time. And because liberals are asexual people, and they, but they ironically, you know, advocate Cardi B and sexuality as a form of social control, they don't like it when men are openly about their desires. So we have three words here, preference, fetish, desire. Everyone has desires. Freud even studied about desires. Jacques Lacan knows that we have desires. But uh, a preference is just a politically correct word to say something that's soft and non-harming and doesn't offend anyone. That's a desire. But I guess a fetish obviously means a fixated desire, or at least a desire that we we must have, right? And I guess and supposedly evil is that which causes pain. I guess a fetish is painful because it causes pain even though there's tons of sadomasochists out there and people like zoo sadists who have sex with their animals and beat them up. Nobody's calling that a fetish. In fact, they have zooier than now podcasts to make sure they're accepted by the gay community as merely just a preference. Right. And so when you're the white guy who doesn't do drugs, who's, you know, athletic, strong, religious, you know, has your masters, whatever, does the right thing, never cusses, all that. And then you say in the back here, you go on Hinge, you go on OkCupid, and you're like, I think I want an Asian wife. I think I want a Chinese. Because that's solely my subculture. That is, if you're open about that, that's considered a fetish. You must accept the tardy fucking gentrified haircut white woman from like Bushwick who's in college debt. You must accept the tattooed bitch. You must accept the black woman who calls herself promiscuous totally irrelevant subcultures that liberalism cuts off your legs so you're equal like everyone else and here's a thought experiment imagine you're a white kid and you you grow up you live in kentucky and you're like 18 and you go to high school and you learn japanese on your own you love anime you love video games the first time you masturbated was to hang tie you like japanese porn hub all that that's completely healthy and normal stuff. And, you know, you just don't like the bully white girls, e-girls, and you realize there's a connection that they all want to be anime and Asian. So you develop the blue-pilled concept that, oh, I love Japan, I want to go and teach and move to Japan. And then the kid, you know, he does the JET program and he gets in. By the time he's 20, instead of going to college, he's going to be, you know, teaching in Japan or doing military duty there. Now, when he's open on Twitter and he's all about that... All of a sudden, they say, oh, great, another white boy gentrifying up Japan. Another white boy colonizing Japan. Right? The, you know, here's a form of self-projection going on, because it's usually that liberal living in Japan with his own Japanese wife, trying to make everyone anti-racist or into punk music or something like that, and trying to whitewash everybody. 
But again, you use this conundrum. The white boy who's into Japanese studies is trying to get away from his bumpkin, lower class, farmer culture, Kentucky out in Bowling Green. And here his life is going to be rich in Osaka, where beautiful Japanese women, educated, high IQ, fancy society, no fucking country music here and there. Uh, radical new electronic music, uh, different fashion styles, a sense of logical being and peace in the mind. And our liberal culture, when he runs away from that toxic relationship in America, the state tells him, you should hate yourself for being white. You should hate yourself for actually sexually seeking out women of different races. You, you belong here. You belong in Kentucky. Imagine if a hunter is in the forest and he is looking to discriminate between uh, shooting possums and deers. He needs the venison tonight, and possums don't offer venison. There's also different types of deer that have low-quality venison that won't feed a family. So the hunter must discriminate in order to kill a deer. Well, go to any nightclub from New York City to Los Angeles. People naturally discriminate in a nightclub. There are drug dealers, there are swingers, there are depraved and decadent people. And these are all individuals that work in cushy, white-collar jobs that also enforce the Black Lives Matter narrative. Flying Ukrainian flags outside their house, all that. And here they are, acting like decadent characters from a Hubert Selby Jr. novel in the club, and they're looking for someone to have sex with. They're literally discriminating the club in order to find something whatever or they're trying to find a drug dealer that discrimination attitude is what segregates intelligent people from lower iq people the concept that you have apartheid in south africa isn't so much evil mean admixture european people did some evil genocide thing to me they just acknowledge race is real there should be a difference i want rhodesia you want that place. And then they say, well, you colonize. The game isn't rigged. Well, when two groups of opposing people are in the same room, people just feel comfortable in their own identity politic. And so people naturally discriminate to find what they like. Add the word nerdy white guy with the bodacious black girl into hip hop. The nerdy white guy is looking for someone into indie rock or whatever. He'll be pretty much okay with the black girl into beach house and anime because that can fulfill his desires but he's going to probably gravitate to someone who has a, a particular upbringing than his than simply just a rhizomic colorful mess that happens and just under liberalism we have to be blind and just choose and treat each other as human being individuals or something silly ever read the bell curve charles murray the bell curve argues there's a cognitive elite, and the cognitive elite goes against low IQ people and uses capital under the capitalist system to make sure that their jobs promote values according to the cognitive elite. So that's why you have your San Francisco's and Manhattan's to basically carve out spaces for things wealthy people like to do. Uh, cognitive elite, shop at Trader Joe's, and whatever, uh, from say a Kroger's or like a food lion. There's a difference there in how big your paycheck is. And so the bigger the capital, the more resources you get that is accordance to the good life. And so in the bell curve, the argument remains the same where that subculture, subculture, not just group of high IQ people, the subculture of high IQ people correlates to a discriminatory subculture to make sure values are always good, living in a, a fairy tale land. And this is where they get their egalitarian thesis from. It's because they, they live in an ivory tower and they project it onto everyone else. And it's socialism for me, but not for you. And so People, these wealthy people enjoy reading books over then, say, watching TV. This is a classic Paul Fasselian um, class uh, distinction. Now, according to intelligence, intelligent people are self-aware and self-actualized about everything around them. They know who they are. Liberals love to say that gay people are smart or queer people like to smart because they use their identity politics and subculture to get across against the plebes out in Kentucky you don't understand. Well, if you're a smart young white man with a high IQ and you, you've done nothing wrong 
and you know what you want sexually bringing to the, the, the difference between you as an adult and you as a kid, and you prefer the preference of Asian women, let it be. Why is there a liberal tyranny against you for doing so? And this is pretty much why I do what I do, is simply because it is such a a, a glitch in the liberal thinking of fellow whites. It's, it's obnoxious. It's the bad guys are admixture European people enforcing liberalism, which uh, Kevin McDonald argued that it might even be that so that liberalism is a trait of admixture European people, sadly, or it just might be a mind virus you only find in America. Point in being is that uh, egalitarianism is bad, liberalism is cancer, and, and it really boils down to you, and it, this isn't a libertarian argument, but you cannot successfully have desires and be open about them and create an identity politic around them, even though the art world celebrates unique and fascinating subcultures so as long as it subscribes to neoliberal hegemony of, or just liberalism in general. And um, it's, it's so ass backwards, you know, for just being one little thing and saying, discriminating, I prefer Asian women. That's what I want. This is what I grow up with. This is how... I see my future. There's just something wrong because you announced you're an enemy against the state. You've announced that um, you have an identity politic that doesn't subscribe to what's happening, and you thus become an enemy of white people. There was another Richard Wolff. I think he was an anarchist writer. He wrote a book called Confessions of an Ex-White Man. He used the word white facetiously to describe that he's outside of the bourgeois behavior ad mixture European people. And I guess that means he's he's cool with blacks and cool with Asians and Mexicans and Indians or whatever. I don't know. But if they use that kind of whiteness study language, uh, use it against them, oh, that's the wrong way. Again, I'm putting only the, the loopholes in liberal thought here. And think about what if you're mixed? What if you're like quarter Asian, half Asian, or just small 25% Asian or 25% Native American, and you grew up in that kind of environment? And you say, by blood, of course, even by the, the one drop ideal that you're partially Jewish means you should keep being Jewish, right? And therefore, you should, if you're part Indian or quarter, quarter or a dime Indian, you should seek out an Indian woman. It, it, it's, it's ridiculous. And uh, this, this dime lo logic cannot be applied to the work of admixture European people. Uh, they, they, they have their veneered. There's a blind spot there. I now agree that my subculture, my healthy straight-edge subculture, is hostile against the state. And therefore, I announce myself as an open Asian sexual to tease and hurt the opponents. Because the opponent is ass-backwards, and most Zoomer white kids are ass-backwards from the ages of 18 to 23, and they think they're fucking women. They think they're trans or something. They think they're not even a man. That's just how depraved and decadent are. Because if you use that logic and say, you know... Oh, I'm actually, I'm a man, but I'm actually a woman. It's like your desire, how is that not a fetish, to use their own language? Oh, that's just a preference. you got to respect my liberal preference and my liberal transhumanist pronouns of sorts. We're entering levels of goofiness where if you're in the Borg and you act like the manners of the Borg, the Borg will eliminate you. And you're just outside the Borg in your own Max Sterner-esque ego to egoist philosophy, and you're pointing out all these crude things, and you know what beautiful is. You know what beauty is. I prefer this subculture of Atari Teenage Riot and Asian sexuality. So, again, maybe I'm going back to the libertarian thing, but it's not really libertarianism. It's just like this whole, you either respect the subculture or you don't. You expect my art or you don't. The problem is I hate liberals, and liberals have an illogical uh, method of thinking. And I'm here to make art, and I'm here to enlighten you. This is my preference. This is what I like. This is my theme. If you don't get, don't like my uh, art, don't let the doors hit your ass on the way out. And to say that fixation, fixation, any fixation, being a nerd or obsessive is a fetish. Some people say they have a gear fetish, that they're obsessed with parts in a car. That's something like having a okay kind of fetish that, that's okay. A hobby, in a material fetish, that's okay. You know, not to offend Timothy Morton object orientology wise, but the thing is, I'm joking there, thinking is if it's another person, another, oh, that's a fetish. Fixation is how you're devoted to an art and what you're thinking constantly. Uh, 
if somebody's thinking about race all the time, do they have a race fetish? Do they have a war fetish? What is that? And if you're openly gay, you're homosexual, don't you have a man fetish? You keep thinking of penis and balls and man's asses all the time. Oh, and then, then out of politics, 50, 60 years ago, they took homosexuality out of the list of disorders because, oh, that's just what men do, intelligent white Western men do. They have a form of Platonism, and uh, they just have a fixated desire on the man. It's not like they read, you know, Joseph Chambra's Disordered about his upbringing of the next gay, and they, they discovered that. How come homosexuality gets the... Uh, leeway. I don't understand. So you could make the argument and say Asian sexuality is homosexuality because there's a fixation and love of this kind of Saint Sebastian figure of sorts. You know, the word fetish is ultimately punk rock because it's ultimately going against the liberal authorities here and that they are treating you like a fucking monster and that liberalism plays a game on you of other white people. It's this game where everybody's playing cards and the liberals are playing fair by playing the rules, but the people outside of liberalism can, you know, have the power to see what cards they're going to play in advance. And that's the issue there, too. It's, it's, it's a veneer, a facade, so they won't question bigger things. It's, they, they're role-playing, like they're Plato or Socrates or Shakespeare, this, like, mental ill Harold Bloom disorder of sorts. Finally, there's guilt by association. By using certain words, as Philip K. Dick would say, you thus control the language. If I like peculiar types of bands and peculiar types of art movements, therefore my guilt by association makes me equivalent to another associate. And this is where liberals go nuts, because liberals have to treat everyone like the same. But if that guy likes insane clown posse, we're probably going to know he's a juggalo, right? And I make this very clear, I make up my own words, because I don't like using other existing words out there, because it already has an ideological premise to it as Philip K. Dick mentioned. And so, when I say Asian sexuality, they're drawing uh, pictures in their head, right? And the picture in their head is probably like um, an obsessive middle-class Kentucky white kid with like, who goes to cosplay events and he's completely nerdy. And, and they have this image of the hated uh, Quasimodo of sorts, which is so ridiculous and bad music. But, you know, uh, tell it to the intelligent, you know, hipster white kid who's going to NYU and he lives in Bushwick with his Chinese girlfriend. Oh, it's okay. He's in the Simbo Motto guys. It's okay. He knows a little bit about the history of idi indie video games. That's more eccentric. You know, what about the dude who did Undertale and his Asian girlfriend? Okay. Nobody's questioning that. It's so fucking ridiculous. It literally is a class divide in the ideological uses of the words that you say. Ray Girard, French philosopher, talked about envy, talked about emulation. We're mimicking one another. We're not as the liberals we think we are. We are animals. We mimic the popular kid. We become envious. We, the good life is thus mimicking the life of Jesus. This is a long story short. And Dick Hebdige says that subculture, other than culture, is the inauthentic mode, and thus we cannot go more in grasp of understanding of Heidegger. And John Paul Sartre would say, oh, just embrace subculture. If you think you're a woman, then that's authenticity. And that is a bastardized kind of individual anarchist Michel Foucault type of thinking that pretty much has ruined or the ideal what postmodernity is, this kind of bourgeois white people thought. And... I'm an artist. I know what beauty is. I love anime. I love hangtai. Those are all beautiful art forms that also have ideological motivation of telling the viewer to live the good life. And, if, and you know what the good life is, you'd understand that has origin in Japanese culture and how do the Japanese fantasy plays out and how we all woo, we all woo to be like that. If Elon Musk's wife or whatever Grimes has anime avatars on her Twitter, she is a oligarch telling everybody else that anime and hangtai is indeed the good life in art direction. So a kid is much more healthier masturbating to hangtai than he ever would actual um, street pornography you find on Pornhub or X videos. Because hangtai gives us the image of the good life. Anime obsession draws us a better reality that is Eurasian futurism, that is anime realism, that is a beautiful art direction everybody is happy and lives harmonious in, we don't have to live with disgusting brown people a African civilization destroying the city building tendency outside, and everybody knows that, everybody knows this, and it's the death 
of the white bourgeois culture that continues to oppress us by mind games, as Jean Bourgeois would say, is that social control now is something to do with what the bourgeois police state neighbor is looking at you and trying to control your thoughts because you can't say nigga. Meanwhile, we have people like Black Pigeon Speaks and Radical Viewer, where we know Black Pigeon Speaks lives in Japan with his Japanese wife, but we don't know if Radical Reviewer lives in Japan but has a Japanese wife, but we kind of know. We kind of know that is happening. Two opposing, opposing white people voices, one from Canada, one from the States. One is right wing, one is left wing. But both are the same. Both live in Japan. Both have a Japanese wife. Both will have children, Japanese Eurasian children, that will change the geopolitical sphere of the future. That's more akin to the four-star movie Big Hero 6 of a future Tokyo, San Francisco, new Eurasian bourgeois where the definition of whiteness really just means Japanese Eurasian. What does that mean? Why is nobody three steps ahead questioning that? And if you do, the white decadent nihilist liberals would say will go mad. And yet they're the ones promoting homosexuality. They're the drug dealers. They're the alcoholics. They are the dysfunctional group. And they don't like it when the clean-cut, straight-edge kid race mixes with an Asian. That is considered racist and evil. And as I use the word facetiously, how is this not Aryan? Aryan, as the liberals like to translate it as, means the master race. And also going back, unironically, the Indo-Aryan people of the ideal person. There is an ideal Asian Aryan individual. Asian Aryanism is real, to use the word facetiously or not. It is the end game of a Eurasian people eliminating through dysgenics, and they know eugenics is real. They are eliminating the white working class with making the frogs are gay, putting them with estrogen, all that fun stuff, and just making sure they are annihilated in West Virginia, and meanwhile all admixture Eurasian European people are congregated in Manhattan and San Francisco and LA and they continue to go to art school and continue to mock and mimic and make sure that they only get a six-figure job by supporting the Biden boomer elite. It is happening right in front of us and anybody denying or getting shocked over the superficial notion of Asian Aryanism simply does not read or does not wish to question their own reality. And it's funny too because the very people that they def the people who censor you are the people who go in denial or get their feelings hurt when you tell them the truth. When you say that there are crony YouTube stars out there to playing the capitalist game, making money, don't know what they're talking about, and you make one criticism remark, they want to shut you up, they want to censor you. Hilarious, right? And they talk about big censorship all the time when it's really the very white nationalist and reactionary sphere censoring and spiral fighting against each other because they don't want to hear that Richard Spencer snorts coke, that Greg Johnson is a homosexual, that Matthew Heimbach is a wife beater. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear an idealistic message and then meanwhile the mainstream media paints them as enemies of the state and they deserve it because they are so dumb they don't even question what's happening in group. And now we're seeing this in the so-called leftist spread tube sphere with, with um, all these whack jobs. And the only, only Caleb Maupin is, is pointing them out and saying that that's not true communist, Marxist-Leninist communism. And we're reaching an endgame here where it is good that people are questioning the capitalist system, but at the same time, we thus become capitalists exploiting one another. Right. And that requires ideology to be promoted. And so when I'm on the soapbox here and I'm talking to others about how this user, that person has hypocrisies, they don't want to hear it. And then when you confront them in their DMs, they get scared. Right. This is a Jim Goad approach. Jim Goad loves doing this. Jim Goad uniquely DMs you and says, what's the issue? And they don't answer act because it's questioning their own nature. They have their own uh plural pronoun reality inside their head that they belong to a fan base and that shows you that they're not thinking individuals they belong to the borg and that's why i think most people are scared and afraid to admit it and so ultimately i am a proponent that the f the five things we cannot talk about race sexuality work violence space those five things 
Once you talk about any of those issues, the state hates you. The state is against you. Liberalism is against you. Liberalism is cancer, by the way. And any intersectional force against liberalism is great with me. And so I know what I like. I know what the good life is. You can't tell me other lies that I cannot like East Asian culture, the women, the aesthetics, the art, the philosophy. You can't tell me that because I know what the good life is. And the good life isn't America. It isn't the globalized capitalist West. And snarky people like Radical Reviewer, who may be saying that we should destroy society and be anti-capitalist, he knows the good life too. He has a Japanese wife. Non-compete, he has a Vietnamese wife. So again, the hypocrisies show you must move on because we know Eurasian futurism is here. This is Pill Eater, and I recorded this on May 30th, 2022.